Hi, I'm David Pollandine, Director of Development for IGM Canada here in the Prairies, and I'm back to share with you how IGM are continuing to protect people in poverty from violence around the world, even during this time of COVID-19. I've decided to do that from uh, Winnipeg HQ rather than being outside in the cold. So we're responding in three ways. First of all, it's an immediate response, reaching out to the need brought on by COVID-19, continuing IGM reporting in the field has been vital component supporting communities during COVID-19. In Guatemala, this led to improvements to violence against women and children hotline in reports of violence against women and children decreasing dramatically following a March lockdown in response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Guatemala. Although the lockdown was necessary to contain the virus, victims were unable to leave their homes to report to authorities the vulnerability to domestic violence increased with work and the school closures. IGEM supported the Public Ministry, the Guatemala Prosecution, Prosecution Service, to develop special guidelines for, for receiving and processing complaints of sexual violence and violence against women and children in response to the national state of emergency due to COVID-19. IGM also assisted local authorities in the implementation and dissemination of the guidelines. One example of these guidelines is simplifying the process for filing a complaint that will result in the dispatch of a patrol unit, either immediately or within 72 hours, depending on the nature of the crime, of course. Since then, the Public Ministry has seen a 35% increase in complaints related to these crimes. IGM Guatemala will continue to support this critical initiative to improve coordination between prosecutors and police. Secondly, IGM are doing a near-term response, rescuing people now who are in need of rescue. In the Philippines, six girls are now free from cybersex trafficking after being rescued by Philippine authorities. This rescue happened just days after they had rescued four other children, which you may remember I reported on in my previous vlog. This shows the authorities' determination that lockdowns will not stop them from fighting cybersex trafficking. One suspect was also arrested during the operation, and now the young women, who are between the ages of 12 and 19, are receiving the dedicated care needed for restoration. This operation is yet another example of law enforcement agencies from around the world coming together to combat cybersex trafficking and send rescue. Often Philippine authorities receive tips from foreign law enforcement counterparts where in their own countries they can't identify or arrest their citizen who abuse Filipino children online. Philippine authorities then use the information to rescue the children and make arrests. In Ghana, following up from reporting on last week's story of Godwin, during the month of October, IGM and government partners conducted three rescue operations to bring I identify trafficking victims to safety and arrest the suspects responsible for their enslavement in the fishing industry. In total, 21 trafficked children were rescued and 15 suspects were arrested. More details will come in. But meanwhile, you can see here a few photos of children who were rescued in one of, the op of those operations playing outside the processing centre where their statements were taken by police. Thirdly, IGM are looking at a long-term response, and that's continuing to partner with governments to protect people in poverty from violence. IGM continues to work with the Thai government to partner in rescuing and restoring men trafficked from across the whole region into the Thai fishing industry. In a recent study, IGM found that 14% of interviewees in the Thai fishing industry had been physically abused and almost 6% had witnessed fellow crewmates being murdered by their employer. IGM has been working with the Thai government and multiple partners to rescue workers who are lost and endangered at sea, increase awareness of migrant workers' rights, enforce fair labour laws and disincentivize exploitation by prosecuting perpetrators of forced labour. Well, we started off today, didn't we, in Guatemala. We then went to the Philippines, then to Ghana, and then we finished off in Thailand. Well, I want to take us back to the Philippines because next month on the 20th of November, we are going to be holding our first online Canada-wide benefit called Cherished More Precious Than Gold. And there we hope to raise funds for 12 rescue operations from cyber sex trafficking of children in the Philippines. It would be fantastic if you could join us. I'm going to be there 
co-presenting with Marie Gomez from City News. And we'll also be hearing from Dr. Clara Antipala, who is a head of um, the aftercare programme in the Philippines, and from Linda Yang, who was a legal fellow in Cebu, um, the legal team there for two years. So we'd love it if you can come along. All you need to do is go on to the link, which is on the bottom of the screen, www.igem.ca forward slash cherished, and there you can register. It's $40 for a ticket and all that money is going to go towards these rescues. And actually, if you wanted to watch it in a group, you could actually buy one ticket and you could all watch together in a group. Obviously, according to the, the guidelines that we now have to really adhere to under COVID-19. Be lovely if you could make it. I'd love to see you there. And thank you as you continue to partner with us as we seek to rescue and restore victims of violence around the world and um, just as we walk with them during this very difficult time of COVID-19. Thank you so much. God bless, take care and stay safe until we speak again in a few weeks. Thank you. Bye-bye.